Amen. Good morning, church. Hey, welcome to our 10, 15, 10 a.m. service. We're glad that you're with us. And thank you all for coming in and uh, being on time. Really deeply, deeply appreciate it. Again, welcome to Olney First Methodist Church. We exist to connect people to Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Jeff Belmer. We're glad that you're here. Got a special Sunday, got a special speaker, and uh, our presiding elder, elder, Reverend Dr. Andy Adams, is with us. Very good, holy, holy man of God. Uh, just has an impeccable reputation, just loves Jesus so much, and we're really glad to have you. And so you're going to get to hear him preach, and, uh, and then he's going to lead us in a very short meeting uh, at the end of our service. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Mandy, who has a couple of announcements. Good morning. There will be no Bible study on Wednesdays until we start Feed Your Faith again um, in the fall. Uh, the heat wave this Friday will be at the Bauer House from 6 to 8. Please bring a snack to, ch to share. And there is a new blood pressure cuff, stethoscope, and pulse oximeter in the Welcome Center in case of any emer uh, medical emergencies. And we want to thank Cindy Bailey for donating that. And also, um, last week, uh, Suzette came up and was sharing and put a nice basket out there to help our uh, mission team as we prepare to go to Kenya uh, in just eight days. And uh, hearing from what's on the ground there where we're going to near Mount uh, Kenya is, uh, I said last week, $20 for a pair of shoes. Well, it's changed uh, just a little bit. For $20, we are raising money uh, to buy uh, children their school uniform. There's over 300 children that don't have a school uniform and because uh, they just can't afford it. And a school uniform is really, uh, we saw this in, in the Philippines at Christ Church when we were buying uniforms and having uh, lunch programs provided. The uniform helps them to just really fit in and feel, feel special. It, it's, just, it's, it's a big step up for them. So for $20, if you have a $20 uh, donation, uh, last week we raised around $500 for it, and uh, this week we'll see how we go in also next Sunday. Uh, but uh, again, $20 per uniform. They, uh, they get uh, a shirt, uh, uh, pants, or a skirt and, and shoes out of it. So again, um, we're just being the hands and feet of Christ, of touching kids around the world. We'll send you pictures and everything like that. So we're really looking forward to that. Amen. Well, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We have this opportunity to come and to worship. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you have brought us to this time in the life of our church. We thank you, Lord, for touching so many people. We ask you, Lord, your continued touch, Lord, upon our youth, upon our mission teams, upon our outreaches, upon our prayer teams, upon our leadership. And as we just want to let go and let you, God, do all you want to do. So here we are. We invite you, Holy Spirit, fire to come. Fall afresh upon each and every heart, family, and lives that are listening or here presently. In the strong and powerful name of Jesus, we pray. We invite you to stand as we begin to worship together.
God is good. All the time. And all the time. Hey, good. let's greet each other this morning. It's handshakes, smiles, hugs, however you want to do it. Excited to have uh, uh, Reverend Andy with us today, and we look forward to our meeting that will follow. Again, he's our uh, presiding elder, and he's the, if you want to use a uh, uh, term, he's like the district superintendent, and uh, he's over uh, three quarters of the state of Illinois. And uh, what some people don't really realize is that we used to be, our conference ran from a little north of I 80 all the way down to Cairo and Metropolis. Well, now our conference, which is the Great Lakes Conference, it's all of Wisconsin, um, Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan. So, so whenever you get rid of me, you might get a Michiganite, or they might put me up there and let me freeze to death and, and stuff like that. So, so, I mean, it's a major, major dynamic change in what we're used to. And, and, um, and, 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 and Andy's going to share things with us today. Amen? Hey, anybody got any pings going on out there? Anybody want to share a ping? What's going on in your life? Pings? Anybody? Ping? <laughs> anybody got a ping? Well, I, it took me a month to get a visa to go to Kenya. I don't know what they found out about me. But in, praise God, and I had a lot of people praying, and uh, that finally came through. And we're just really excited because the little satellite revival services that we're going to do for three days, our first week we're there, you know, we're going to be touching maybe uh, 15 to 20,000 people may show up. So we're really excited about that. And then uh, there's been over 1.6 million invites to the main uh, festival revival towards the end of our trip there. And uh, they're, they, they said they've never seen anything like this. And uh, they're really excited about um, the ministry and mission. So continue to pray for Levi. Levi, you're going to get up there. You know, 10,000 people in front of you. You're just going to be preaching away and everything, right? <laughs> and Mandy and, and, and Kaylee. And uh, we're looking. Uh, uh, so we're, uh, we're really excited. So keep, please keep us uh, covered in your prayers this morning. Well, Lisa's going to read with us in a minute uh, the 23rd Psalm, and a lot of people use that in, in funerals, and I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice psalm, but I mean, it's so much more than a funeral um, uh, psalm. It's, it's, it's an incredible, uh, intimate, uh, the relationship we have. In verse 6, verse 6 says something like, uh, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, right? Surely goodness and mercy. The, the word follow in Hebrew is radoff. And radoff means to ardently pursue and dog after. Okay? So God is out there and he's, he's chasing you. And, and when he catches you, he's not, he's not going to do this to you. He wants to give you mercy and grace. Surely, mercy and grace shall follow me. This is the kind of God that we serve. The God of mercy and grace. In fact, it says when uh, Moses was being hid in the cleft of the rock as the Lord walked by him on the top of Mount Sinai, um, the Lord said two things to Moses. He says, I'm going to tell you my name, and I'm going to tell you what I'm all about. I'm going to tell you my character and nature. And as he walked by, he said, I am the Lord, and I am merciful. We serve a God who's very merciful. So if you need some mercy today, you, you've come to the right place. Amen? Amen? So I invite you to stand if you're able as, we, as Lisa reads from us from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. 
He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. As we come to our time of stillness before the Lord, uh, we just want to lift up, a, you know, we have an incredible VBS uh, going to be kicking off later this afternoon. and um, Shannon has more information on that in our children's moment. Uh, just continue to lift up uh, our city and our nation. Continue to lift up the situations that are going on here and around the world. We pray for peace to fall in Ukraine and other places where there's a great violence and great loss of life. And uh, continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We also want to lift up Scott Bauer. Ask the Lord, Lord's healing hands to touch him and, and for John uh, Curry. And continue to always lift up Bob and Rachel Gammon. And uh, the, the people of Nairi. Uh, that we are going up by Mount Kenya, and for them to be open, for the Lord to begin to uh, put in place those divine appointments, and those of divine signs and wonders. And uh, so as we go to the Lord in stillness, let's just lift up those requests and uh, any requests you have in your heart. And uh, again, we invite you, if you have anything heavy on your heart, to please feel free to stand or to come up here and pray. And... Uh, and after our time of stillness, we'll follow up with our fellowship prayer and then our Lord's prayer. Amen. So let's go to the Lord. Oh, you are holy. It is your character, righteousness, Lord. Your mercy, your love, your grace. Lord, it says in Psalm 85, verse 10, Love and faithfulness shall meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. And the Lord will indeed give what is good and our land shall yield. For the Lord shows favor to those who seek him, who desire his perfect will and way. So the Lord, bend down, O Lord, and hear our prayer. Answer us, Lord. For we need your help. Guard our lives. Holy Spirit, fire come and touch. Consume us. The darkness and the things that try to keep us and, get, and the distractions that are out there, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we just pray, Lord, your peace, your mercy, your grace. We let, ask you, Lord, to allow your word to become the, the most important thing for our ears and our hearts to hear today. No text is more important. No upcoming game. No event is more important than us hearing in our soul your mercy and grace of your word. Holy Spirit, fire come and fall and touch your healing presence upon Scott and John and Bob and Rachel and others that are on our prayer list. We continue to lift up, Lord, our mission team as we prepare. Continue, Lord, to lift up, Lord, all the VBS. 
and all the dimensions that go with that. Just thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness of so many in this church family. So as we join our hearts together, let, Lord, love, faithfulness, righteousness, and peace all come together in our hearts. Let us see each other as, Jesus, you see us. Let us forgive like you forgive. Let us give mercy as we have received mercy. In the strong name of Christ, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And with that, we're going to invite any kids who want to come up for children's moment this morning. Miss Shannon's got a good, good cheerleading going on here, revving them up. Amen. So come on up. we got a big, big day. Week. Good morning. You guys are quiet this morning. You know what today is? Sunday, this Sunday. It's VBS. It's the first day of VBS. Are you guys excited? That's not convincing. Okay, how about on the count of three, I want you to cheer and show us how excited you are. Can you do that? As loud as you want. It's open door. If you want to jump up and down, go for it. Okay? Can we do that? Okay. One, two, three. Man, a rough crowd this morning. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited, and I think you guys are going to have so much fun. Um, we are going to be learning some really powerful truths. Um, during this week of VBS. And one of them, I have a poster here that says, do what Jesus says. So God calls us to do what Jesus says. And we may wonder, what does that look like? What does that mean? And how can we do what Jesus says? And um, a really good thing we're going to learn this week is how we can use the Bible to do what Jesus said. There are tons of passages in the Bible about what can help us and guide us on doing what Jesus says. And one of them is from Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, that says, let us keep looking to Jesus. So when we look to Jesus, he is our guide, and he will show us how we can do what Jesus says by the way he lived and what he did and how he served people, how he loved others. And that is our model. That is our guide to doing what he says, living like him. So just a reminder, uh, VBS starts tonight, July 9th through July 13th, 530 to 8 p.m. And the kiddos worked very hard today during Sunday school, and they made thank you cards. So if any of you out here have helped make VBS possible, or you're going to be serving during the week of VBS, please stand up because we would love to recognize you and these kiddos are going to pass out thank you cards. So go ahead and stand up and they are going to come bless you with some awesome cards.
guys can come back here when you're done. Don't forget about Miss Shannon. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, it takes many, many hands to make this event possible, and we're just so grateful, and thank you for the support and the love that you guys have shown. Um, I know they didn't seem like it, but I think they're really going to like VBS, and they're excited. Um, but just please continue to pray for the week. Pray that um, the kids that need to be here will come, and that um, this can be a place that they feel the love of Jesus when they walk in, and that yes. they will accept Jesus as their Savior, because that's that's why we do this. That's why we have this week of VBS is to um, plant seeds in these kids' hearts. So um, I will pray with you guys, and we can go ahead and, and go to Children's Church. And, oh, do, yes. you, and, and do you have to uh, be pre-registered to come in, or you can you just show up and register? You can just show up. You don't have to be pre-registered. Um, feel free if you know of anybody that would like to come and they're not registered, they can show up, and we'll get them signed up. And we do still have extra T-shirts, so they can get one. Amen. So. All right, let's pray. Thanks. Father God, we just thank you for these kiddos. Jesus, we thank you for their hearts and yes. their faith in you. And Father, we just pray that these kiddos will be a light to the ones that come um, to VBS this week, that they will be able to share the love of Jesus. And uh, we pray for the kids that need to be here will come and that they will receive you as their Savior. Jesus, we thank you for all of the volunteers and the many hands that have made this event possible. Lord, just bless them. Give them strength through this week. When they get tired, when they get weary, just lift them up that they can continue to pour into these kids. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Thank you so much. And Father God, we ask your blessing upon the gathering of these tithes and offerings, Lord, now as we worship you. Because of the blessings you have given us. And Lord, we know, Lord, that as we're faithful with the small things you ask, that you can bless us with bigger things. We ask you, Lord, for people, Lord, that are really struggling today, Lord, that they shall receive a special anointing in your special way. So, Lord, these offerings, Lord, are yours. Bless them and multiply them. Touch people here and around the world. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
opportunity, Lord, for us to gather here for Holy Communion, to gather here, Lord, to hear your word, for our hearts to be touched by your holy flames. So, Lord, we just ask your anointing. Precious wind, come and fill our sails. You've done it before, Lord. Please do it again. In Jesus' strong name. It's an honor and a privilege this morning for me to invite uh, up for you to hear and to uh, just to see a, a man of God in action as he preaches and shares his heart. This is uh, Reverend Dr. Adam, Andy Adams uh, from Troy Global Methodist Church. And uh, yeah, nice to meet you. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a wonderful man of God. He's going to bring the message this morning. So those of you that were tired of hearing me, you get to hear him. And uh, again, and afterwards, we will have a very brief um, meeting because we are part of the Global Methodist Church, and, and he's kind of our, uh, our leader in this area. And so I'm just going to turn things over. Lord, just anoint my brother in the strong name of Jesus. You know, he hungers and thirsts for souls mm. and seeds to be planted. Mm. Amen. 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 Well, Pastor Jeff said, when I walked in, he said, wait, a district superintendent without a jacket? And I said, welcome to the Global Methodist Church. <laughs> well, good morning, uh, First Methodist Church here in Olney. It is good to be in Olney, home of the white squirrel. Uh, you probably get sick of hearing that, uh, but it is, uh, you know, and, and really uh, a stone's throw away from a uh, uh, Jasper County, where my wife and I both have roots, so uh, so this is this is uh, uh, home in many ways. This this area of the state, uh, and I, I bring you greetings from Bishop Mark Webb. I know you don't know who that is, but he loves you and he cares for you, um, as well as uh, Reverend Scott Pattison, who is uh, the president pro tem of our newly established, as of July first, just a week ago. The Great Lakes Provisional Annual Conference, which, as Pastor Jeff shared, uh, makes up all of Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Wisconsin. And my name is Andy Adams. You, you can just call me Andy. Uh, that's, that's enough for me. Uh, and I'm privileged and honored to be your presiding elder over uh, what they're calling now the Illinois South District. Uh, but we are growing and expanding. Uh, so... Uh, come February or March, uh, we are going to redraw the lines of the districts again, uh, be, uh, probably become two or maybe even three districts, uh, depending on how many other churches join us uh, from the Illinois South area uh, in December. Uh, your pastor Jeff and I have rubbed shoulders uh, for a little bit here and there over the last 20 years or so, uh, but I am most familiar with your church uh, because of uh, the Schonert family. Uh, it, my uh, connection with the Schonert family began when I was a pastor in Champaign, Illinois, uh, when two of the Schonert boys uh, came up to the University of Illinois and were a part of uh, my church there. And so uh, Steve and Meridel would, would come and visit, and we got to know them uh, a little bit, and then, and then started seeing him around annual conference. And Steve and I uh, really have been in the trenches together as a part of uh, several general and jurisdictional conferences uh, over the years where, where we've done our best to to revive the church, but, but also to kind of pr protect the integrity of the church. I, I have great respect for Steve and am nothing short of elated that we are on the other side of those dark days. Uh, can, you, can you believe it, Steve? We're out. Uh, like, I, I text some friends every once in a while. I say, we, we made it, we made it. And they say, pinch me. I think I'm, uh, I'm, I might be might be sleeping. Uh, now, now, now we are all part of the Global Methodist Church. Uh, people regularly ask me about the GMC, and, and I often have two responses to their questions, depending on what the, the, the typical questions are. Uh, the first set of questions are about, well, how many churches uh, are in the Global Methodist Church, either in the, the whole big deal or in, in our conference, in our area? And, and to that, I, I say, well, at last count, 
we are at uh, over 2,500 uh, global Methodist churches in the United States. Uh, it's uh, uh, quickly approaching 3,000. Um, and 184 in our conference, the, the Great Lakes Provisional Annual Conference. Uh, but you know, when I first drafted up this sermon, it was a lower number than that. Uh, it's kind of like the book of Acts right now in the Global Methodist Church. Uh, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were becoming Global Methodist. Uh, that, that's really kind of the, the way that it is right now. These are exciting times. It's hard to keep count. And, and to almost all the other questions that I receive about the GMC, this is my standard reply. Well, you know, we're just getting started. So we don't yet have a process for that uh, or an answer for that it, yet. Uh, we're getting there, though. You see, we're, we're in the fledgling days of beginning an exciting new movement. And that means there's an element of chaos. I know some of us can handle uh, chaos a little bit more than others, uh, but there's an element of chaos right now. Uh, and praise God that it's all in his hands. As, as we are just seeking uh, to, to do what, what the sign says here. We're, we're just seeking to follow, uh, follow Jesus as best we can. And we know that the, the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us to, to spread scriptural holiness throughout the land as we make disciples of Jesus Christ to worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. Now, I'm in the role uh, presently of being your presiding elder uh, that, uh, as Pastor Jeff said, that might be new terminology for some of you. It's another way of saying district superintendent. Um, my, my main roles as a presiding elder are to set appointments as needed. Uh, the bishop, uh, Bishop Mark Webb, he still fixes the appointments, but uh, the other presiding elders and I work together to, to kind of get them in place. We do the legwork, and then he... he there aren't any, any red flags. So far, I've, I've uh, set one appointment and I'm working on another. Uh, uh, new appointments in the GMC, though, are indefinite. They, they don't have, you know, uh, we're used to, I know, we're, we're used to, okay, you're, you're where you are for another year. Well, in the GMC, it's, it's indefinite. There's, there's no end time. And so, so that is, uh, that, this appointment making isn't something that I expect to be doing too often. But when the time comes that Pastor Jeff feels called by God to go elsewhere or move or, uh, your, or retires, uh, your, your presiding elder, whether that's me or someone else at the time, will be here to help you find another great pastor. Um, that's one of my roles. It's also uh, part of my role to provide general care and oversight of the churches and the pastors uh, of the district. So I will do whatever I can to resource you and to help you live out your mission as a church. And really, I see my role uh, as, as helping to, you to remain connected to other global Methodist churches and, and to foster collaborative relationships uh, across our district and our a broader denomination which is growing every day as, as we work really to, to fan the flame of this new movement of God that is happening. Um, and although there have already been a few days when those roles that I just mentioned have felt like a full-time job, uh, you should know uh, right off the bat that presiding elders in our conference, uh, and there are 16 of us right now presiding elders, we're not paid for our service. This isn't a, a, even a part-time job for us. Uh, we're not paid for our service. Those of us who are not retired, there are a couple of presiding elders who are retired, uh, but all the rest of us, we serve churches. We're pastors of other churches. Um, so that's, that's my main gig. I mean, my, my main gig, other than being married to uh, my wife, Amy Jo, and, and having two teenagers, you can pray for me later, uh, you know, is... Uh, my main gig is to be the, the pastor, senior pastor of Troy Methodist Church, just a couple hours uh, uh, across 50. That's the path I took this morning. Uh, so so that's, uh, it's rare that I'm not there on a Sunday morning, but it is a pure joy to be with you here today. Uh, you know, I, I was thrilled to hear from Pastor Jeff that John chapter 10 was up next in your 
uh, kind of uh, working through the book of John. And so I, I'm just going to start us off uh, by, by reading just a, a, a few verses out of John chapter 10 that, that fit with, with this uh, theme of God being our shepherd. Hear the words of Jesus, starting at verse 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Lord, thank you for your word. Would you speak to us through the presence of your spirit to make these words become something more than just words in our heart, but something that makes us alive in you today. For we pray it in your name, Jesus. And all of God's people agreed and said, Amen. Amen. Well, it was uh, really good news for me to hear that you're in John chapter 10, uh, this uh, Good Shepherd passage of Jesus, because I'm actually going to be preaching uh, about God as a Good Shepherd um, in Troy uh, next month. So I was like, oh, this is great. I'll just get a head start on, on that sermon. We're, we've been uh, working through just looking at the, the various uh, roles that God is described as in the Bible. We're kind of looking at some of the major ones uh, just to, to know God better and to, to experience how God works in our lives in, in, a, in, in deeper, different ways. Uh, uh, roles like transcendent creator, God as sovereign king or righteous judge, loving father, and good shepherd. So, so this was perfect timing. Thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, giving me a head start for uh, uh, a sermon next month. Uh, so, so you just need to know that when Jesus was talking to this group of Pharisees as well as just a, a, a group of uh, other Jews gathered around him here in John chapter 10, and he started using this shepherding or, or uh, uh, we call it pastoral language, uh, it was a metaphor that was already, already deeply developed in the Old Testament scriptures uh, that the people were intimately familiar with. I mean, Jesus was just building upon a rich scriptural understanding of God as Israel's shepherd. It, it wasn't something new in their understanding of God. And yet, the particular role that Jesus had in, in that uh, pastoral scheme uh, was, was new to them. I mean, Jesus, uh, through this passage, and, and a little bit later, by the time you get to the end of John chapter 10, Jesus was, was very clearly claiming to be God. A and by the end of the chapter, the people wanted to kill him. They wanted to stone him. Uh, they, they, to them, that was blasphemy. But I don't want to dwell on that too much. Instead, I want to unpack this role of God as our shepherd. Uh, from, from it, we can learn not only uh, about who God is and what God is like, which is really important in today's world, uh, just being clear about what God really, who God really is and, and what God is like, uh, but, but we can also learn a lot about who we are. Uh, furthermore, we can learn about what it means to follow God and what it means to not. Uh, we, we learn what salvation is all about and, and what's required of us as we grow in our faith and walk on this path that God has for us. I mean, pretty much uh, from this shepherding language, we can get a pretty good grasp of what the Christian faith is all about. That's where we're going. You know, throughout the Old Testament in a variety of places, uh, God is referred to as uh, the shepherd of Israel, either directly or indirectly. Uh, we see this language in the book of Exodus. Uh, right from the very beginning, God was shepherding Israel in the wilderness. 
Uh, we see the metaphor developed later in uh, some of the major prophets like Ezekiel and Isaiah, but probably the most well-known place in the Old Testament scriptures where God is described as a shepherd is none other than the 23rd Psalm, uh, which we heard read earlier. Uh, maybe maybe that's, that's a psalm that is ingrained into your heart. I, I'm just going to say it now. Feel free to, to jump in with me. I know there might be a couple of words different here or there, but but, but well, let's recall that if, if, if you have it kind of in you. The, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. What do you think came to the minds of those who were listening? You know, there, there are other places in the Old Testament uh, when the coming Messiah uh, was predicted to be a shepherd over God's people. Uh, for instance, uh, Ezekiel chapter 34, uh, when, when God chastised uh, through his prophet Ezekiel, the, the, the evil, selfish shepherds over his people, uh, which uh, at the time then uh, God promised that he would set up for them, over them, a shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. This, this was a, a reference to a descendant of David who would come, who's already promised to sit on Israel's throne, the promised Messiah, to be a shepherd over God's people. And, and this is just a, a little bit of what a shepherd does, what, what God does as our shepherd, what, what Jesus does as our good shepherd. First, uh, if you think about it, a shepherd provides for his flock. He, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. You got any green pastures here in Olney? Uh, we, it was nice to see some green on my drive over. Uh, up until about a week ago, we had no green. It was all brown in Troy. I don't know if that's the way it was here or not. We were, we were aching for some water. It had been about a month since we'd had a good rain. Uh, but, but I saw some green pastures on the way over. Uh, but what's the point? God, God provides. He provides. I shall not be in want. That's what a shepherd does for a sheep. Uh, a shepherd also gives guidance. A shepherd leads. That's what God did for the Israelites in the, in the wilderness uh, where, where that biblical shepherding language is first seen in the scriptures. He leads me in paths of righteousness. Uh, third, a, a shepherd provides protection. Protection from outside attack. Uh, one of the most famous shepherds in the scriptures was David. Before he was a king, he was a shepherd. And, and when he was uh, having it out with his brothers about how he was willing to take on Goliath, uh, he, he said, hey, uh, said that to, to King Saul, he said, hey, I, I fought off and killed bears and lions when they attacked my flock. That's what a shepherd does. Even in dark valleys shrouded by death, we need not fear because our shepherd protects us. A shepherd also, uh, when needed, heals and restores uh, parts of the flock that have been wounded or, or injured in some way. And, and finally, on occasion, a shepherd goes out and searches, seeks after sheep that have gone astray. Now, uh, never in the scriptures is the third person of the Trinity uh, ever referred to directly as a shepherd. However, when you consider uh, the, the many functions and roles that the Holy Spirit uh, plays in our lives, you can't help but notice the shepherding language. I mean, think about it. The Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. 
The Holy Spirit feeds us the truth of, of God's Word and provides spiritual nourishment for us. The Holy uh, Spirit guards and protects our heart. I mean, th there's no doubt when you look at the, the role of the Holy Spirit, uh, in addition to the Father and the Son, that, that God in three persons is a shepherd for us. This role uh, that God is described as in a variety of places throughout the Scriptures. So, so if God in three persons, our God, our Trinitarian God, is our shepherd, what does that tell us about ourselves? Uh, or, or what it means to be in right relationship with our shepherd, or what it means to be apart from our shepherd? What, what, what does it mean to be, uh, to uh, what salvation is? Uh, or, or even what does it mean for us as the church? Uh, let's unpack some of that a little bit. I, I think you'll, you'll see how it all comes together. Uh, first, look, I think you can figure this out. I, I need a little help right here. Uh, young people, you, you can really help with this too. Uh, uh, do a better job than you did with the cheerleading earlier, okay? All right, see if you, see if you can get this. If God is the shepherd of his people, uh, and, and we are his people, then in this shepherding metaphor, what does that make us? What are we? Awesome! You got it! Now, what, well, that's, that's sheep individually, and what does that make us all together? His flock. That's right. Oh, you guys are great. Uh, it's not even lunchtime yet, and you're on it. Uh, God is the shepherd. We are his sheep. Uh, now, what... I'm, I'm going to step aside so you can see the answer. Uh, what is the primary role of sheep? To follow to follow the shepherd. That's, that's what we do. God is our shepherd and he leads us and we are his sheep, his flock. We follow obediently. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Now, now then, what, what does it mean, then, what is it to break that right standing, that right relationship with our shepherd? What is sin in, in this metaphor? It's probably language that we are all familiar with. Uh, sin is to wander. To wander, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Sin is to not follow. It's to go astray, to wander off the path of God. And, and, and you know, uh, the, the, the very famous passage from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, makes it clear that we have all wandered from the Lord. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned and gone our own way. And when we do so, when we go astray and wander off the path, we become separated from the flock and from our shepherd. And guess where we find ourselves? In a whole heap of mess. Uh, <laughs> exposed, alone. We find ourselves in great danger away from our provision. We are under threat of attack with no protection. In short, I heard a couple of you say it, we are lost. Lost. Can you see how this shepherding language is so familiar to us? The, the way we, we speak about and talk about things of faith? It, it's, it really, it's the, it's the same for the way we talk about uh, our, our salvation in these pastoral terms. For Jesus, our good shepherd, came to seek and save that which is lost. Uh, one, one of the great uh, shepherding images that Jesus talked about came from Luke chapter 15 when he spoke to another crowd that was made up of Pharisees and other Jews that were described as sinners. And he told them a parable about a shepherd who had a hundred sheep, and one of them was lost. And, and the shepherd, in Jesus' story, leaves the 99, right? He leaves the 99 to seek out the one who has gone astray. And then there is great rejoicing when he finds his lost sheep and brings him home, throws a great party, and Jesus says at the end of the story, he says, uh, uh, that this kind of rejoicing will take place in heaven whenever one sinner who has been lost repents and comes home. 
So in this story, we, we see the shepherd coming to save and rescue his lost sheep, and we're also uh, kind of directed that, that being rescued is conditional upon our coming home. It's conditional upon our repentance, our turning back to the shepherd, and ultimately following that shepherd, our good shepherd again. And, and as we do our part as sheep, as we follow the shepherd, we grow in grace. Uh, the, the more closely we follow, the more we get to know our shepherd's voice. Uh, a little bit later in, in John chapter 10, uh, that's, uh, Jesus says that the sheep know him. They recognize his voice to follow him. That kind of following indicates intimacy with the shepherd. And that's, that, that's the kind of following we are to be about to be in such an intimate relationship with the shepherd that we know his voice and follow. And in our following, there needs to be complete trust because we all know that a good shepherd sometimes needs to lead us into difficult places. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. How many of you sign up for walking through that valley? Not me. We, we, we don't, and yet the shepherd sometimes has to lead us through difficult places. And if we're not willing to follow wholeheartedly, then it is very easy to get lost. If we want to continue to grow in grace and experience the fruit of salvation, we have to trust implicitly the leading of the shepherd. And, and in this case, what, what is that fruit of salvation? What, what is the, the end result of us as sheep knowing the voice of our shepherd and following him with unconditional trust wherever he may lead us. I think you'll like it. Green pastures. Still waters. A restored soul. And Jesus says in John 10 that those sheep that enter through his gate will be saved. And that they will find pasture. And then, then he says this, probably it's the verse right before I began reading from John 10. He says in John 10:10 10, 10, that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but he as the good shepherd Jesus comes to bring life. Not just any life, but abundant life. That is the end result of our faithful following of our shepherd. We have life, life abundant, and we can rest in the care of our shepherd. And that really is a, a, a good summarizing word for the role of God as our shepherd, our good shepherd, care. In his role as shepherd, God exhibits his comprehensive care in our lives, providing, leading and guiding, protecting, healing and restoring, even rescuing when we have wandered and become lost. If you think about it, it's all about his care for us. And the good shepherd cares for us. That, that's why I love the title that is bestowed upon me and, and, and Jeff, that title of pastor pastor. It's a role of care. Everything a pastor does should be about the overall care of his or her sheep. The, the, the flock as a whole uh, as well as the individual sheep. It's a role and an extension and, and a reflection really of our good shepherd himself because he cares for you. I hope you hear that this morning. You know, this, uh, today isn't about a business meeting. Well, we'll do it. <laughs> but that's not what today is about. Today is about you hearing the voice of God saying, I care for you. God cares for you. That, that, that is an essential part of God's character, which we see in the Good Shepherd. He cares for you no matter where you've been, what you have done, He cares for you. 
Whatever it is that you are going through right now, He cares for you. God, God cares for only First Methodist Church. You know, He has led you through some challenging times recently. I, I, I looked down the hallway. Uh, he's led you through some challenging times. Pastor Jeff uh, and his, his health uh, concerns. I'm so glad to hear that you're, you are, you're going to Kenya. No matter what. You're, you're going. Uh, <laughs> we just want to make sure you come back. So, <laughs> you know, you, you've gone through some cha- challenging times recently, but he has provided for and protected you along the way. And whatever wounds... You, you have sustained from the difficult journey, He will heal and restore you over time. Uh, I, I believe that God has placed over you a chief shepherd of this flock who loves you and cares for you and who is willing to sacrifice for you. Pastor Jeff spoke highly of me. I want to speak highly of him. He, he is a godly man who follows Jesus closely enough to hear His voice so that he can direct and guide and lead and care for you. And if I may be so bold, I believe that in God's providence, he has placed you under the care of a Bible-believing, gospel-mission-focused denomination. And as your presiding elder, uh, I intend to do whatever I can to provide care for you and your pastor and, and I believe that as a part of the Global Methodist Church, you are part of a movement of God that will help breathe new life and a fresh move of God's Spirit to transform churches, communities, our nation, and the world. But to truly be part of that move of God, you've got a role. So do I. And that is to follow. To follow the Good Shepherd, Jesus Himself. That is a prerequisite of experiencing the abundant life that he spoke about. We must follow and follow the example of Jesus, which which he models for us as the good shepherd. We must care for one another. We must lead and guide people in paths of righteousness that the good shepherd leads us on. We must tend to those who have been wounded and broken by by the rough terrain or the outside attack of of wolves. We we must be willing to to put aside our comfort, even our security, in order to seek and save the lost, those who have gone astray. For that's what Jesus did. Only he didn't just give up his comfort and security. Jesus did what he said he would do in John 10. He laid down his life. Or a sheep. He was no hired hand. A hired hand wouldn't risk his life. But out of his great love, in order to care for his flock, the sheep of his pasture, Jesus gave his all, and in doing so, rescued all who would hear his voice and turn to follow him. Amen? You know, I, I am keenly aware on any given Sunday, uh, which today is. I heard one of the young, young people say, today's Sunday. Uh, <laughs> you got that right. Any given Sunday, there are quite a number of us who may be experiencing uh, difficult times, just struggles, uh, circumstances uh, that, that put us in need for special care, uh, that care that our Good Shepherd provides. Uh, so, some of you may need the Good Shepherd to provide for your basic financial needs, uh, some, some of us may be in need of physical healing. I've already heard of s- some of those needs. Uh, maybe you need uh, an emotional wound tended. Uh, it's possible there are some internal conflicts within the flock itself uh, between uh, sheep uh, that, that needs resolution and restoration or, or even some, some ways that uh, this flock has come under attack from the outside. Still, some of you, uh, as, as I've shared today and as God has spoken to your heart, may recognize that you've wandered off the path, maybe strayed a, a little bit from the flock and are struggling even to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd anymore. It's possible that none of that describes you, 
but it does describe someone you love and care about deeply, and you, you are burdened for them. And, and if that's the case, if any of those are the case, if you are in need of the, the providing, healing, guiding, protecting, or rescuing touch of God today because of something that you are going through or someone that you love is going through, then, then I, I just want to have a special time of, of prayer for you before we enter into Holy Communion. Uh, and, and so I, I, I'm, I'm actually going to invite any of you who, who feel like you need that touch of God in some way today uh, to stand. I know that there are some folks online. Uh, uh, you can stand where you are too, or e- even better, if you want to come down front and kneel before we share in, in Holy Communion, you can do so uh, in that way. Uh, but I would love to pray for you. Um, uh, and so, so, so I'll, I'll give you a moment just to kind of uh, respond to God's voice in your own heart and stand where you are or or find a place uh, on the kneeler. And I'm going to lead us in a time of prayer, uh, even now before we enter into a remembrance of Jesus' great sacrifice and love for us as he laid down his life for his sheep, out of his great care for you. Let us turn our hearts to prayer. Lord, we join our hearts with what the psalmist declares. You are my shepherd. I shall not want. You make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. You restore my soul. And that's what I pray for the sheep of your pasture here today, Lord. That you would restore their souls that out of your abundant goodness you would provide for their every need. Teach them to trust when it seems that the present fields aren't very green. We pray that you will lead and guide each person standing or kneeling now in your paths of righteousness. That they would clearly hear your voice and obediently follow wherever you lead. We pray that you would guard and protect each person here from harm, from the attacks of the enemy, the thief who comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Help us each to hear your voice and not follow the voices of others. Good Shepherd, we pray also for your healing, restorative touch on those who need it most. Many of us are wounded, broken, And we pray for your spirit to minister to our bodies and our emotions, even in this very moment. May we feel your tender care, even now. Restore and heal us, we pray in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we also pray for those, those of us here and those we love who have wandered off the path regardless of how or why it happened, we are lost. No more excuses. Help us hear your voice. Give us the courage to turn toward your voice. Sustain us as we follow your voice so we can find your path, the path that, that, that leads to salvation, to rest in your care around green pastures and still waters. And finally, Lord, I pray for Alney First Methodist Church, a global Methodist congregation. I pray that the good sheep of this flock will hear your call to lay down their lives for the sake of others, whether that's through VBS or weekly devotion and worship and Sunday school or traveling to Kenya or supporting all of that or any other outreach ministries in any way, shape, or form, that more and more people of this community will come to know you as their good shepherd and come to know the abundant life of following you. We pray this all with great
and hope-filled expectation in the name of Jesus, our good, good shepherd. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to uh, have Holy Communion uh, this morning, um, we're going to have a video uh, for, to, to prepare our hearts. And uh, again, Jesus wants us just to be ready to come and to receive from him. So let his blood wash over. Let's just let go and let him. And uh, so just focus our eyes and attention up on the screen. And Lisa, you're going to be reading. The last meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. He broke bread before them and said, This is my body, broken for you. He then lifted the cup before them and said, This is my blood that is shed for the forgiveness of sins. Every time that anyone eats of this bread and drinks this wine, they are to remember. That in hours, Jesus would be arrested, crucified, and laid in his Three days later, he would rise before us. The church has taken part in the as a way of uniting with Jesus' sacrifice once again in remembrance. Thank you, Holy Spirit, fall upon these gifts, a fruit of the vine and, and bread. We prepare our hearts, Lord, to come forward this morning in the strong and powerful name of Jesus Christ. It is Christ who invites you to come. We invite you to come down this aisle right here as the singers come on up here and um, spend some time with the Lord up here. Uh, please feel free. And, uh, and as you partake of these elements... It is our belief that Jesus is here, and he wraps his loving arms around you to give you mercy, to give you grace, to give you abundant life. Amen? I invite you to come.
you are good and all the time amen we invite you if you'd like to stay for this a brief meeting you may sit down and if you need to leave we understand and uh, Steve is going to kind of take over for just a little bit okay. good morning 